I'm Alien St. Hilaire, and in this, ver uh, this quick video, we're going to talk about the Mesh Central routing tool that's all new. So if you guys have a Mesh Central server or use MeshCentral.com, um, you guys are familiar with lots of features. Well, one of the features that's, that I wanted to add is the ability to port map any port on your local machine to any remote port on any remote machine through Mesh Central. So there's this new tool. And right now it's Windows only, and it's called the Mesh Central Router. And you uh, log in, so you'll have to specify the type of uh, the server uh, that you're using, the username and password. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my my test server here and say OK. And in my case, because the server is not doesn't have a real certificate, um, I don't use a Let's Encrypt certificate or an official cert. It gives me this warning with a little bit of data. I can take a look at the certificate in detail. Now, I know this is my certificate for my te own test machine, so I'll click ignore. But it, normally, you wouldn't see that in the you know, when you really connect. And in this case, I'm using uh, two-factor authentication. So you can use your Google Authenticate application, or in my case, I have a YubiKey uh, that has a, a one-time password. So I'm going to type that and boom, I'm logged in. Uh, if you don't use two-factor authentication, you won't uh, see that screen. And uh, currently, the Mesh Central router does not support the UTF keys. So if you have a one-time password, the uh, the Google Authenticate or YubiKey uh, one-time uh, one passwords, then all three of those will work correctly. So once you get to the screen, what I can do is I can say add a port map. And here it tells you, you can set the local port. So zero means any. And a remote machine, so I'll say, for example, I want, um, I want this Raspberry Pi right here and an application so you can say custom so if you just want to port map you know a, t a tcp port something to something you can do that but if you have an application f in mind for example uh, putty which is uh, for ssh then when you select the application it will fill in the port correctly and you say okay and there you go uh, i have this computer which happens to be this one right here on my screen it's um, it's you know, currently on, the agent's running, and PuTTY from my local port uh, 60, uh, 56,000 something to port 22. Now I can remove or I can open, and if I click open, it will prompt me for the location of the PuTTY application. If you don't have it, that's the link to get it. And then you say OK, it will run the PuTTY application, and oops, let's see if I'll try another um, Raspberry Pi here. So I'll try this one putty and there it goes i'll try i'll try that again perfect and so i got my putty session and i'm going to log in and there we go and you'll notice that as i'm doing this putty session it says one connection right there and so i can click open again open a second one and you see two connections and now i can log in once more so now I get the benefit of having, you know, kind of a full desktop SSH client while going over the cloud to uh, a remote computer somewhere on the Internet. Um, now I can click remove. Obviously, if I t shut off this application, um, then these connections will drop. And that's because the, the connections are actually local hosts to this app and this app routes the connection through to Mesh Central through the agent and, and to the target. Um, another thing I can do is say add. And by the way, I want to mention that these remote devices, it will only show the currently um, the devices that are currently uh, powered on and have an agent on them. So if you're if you have a device that's powered off, like you know DevBox here, you'll see DevBox is not in this list. So only the the ones with agents are will, are going to show up. Um, another thing I, I want to show that's kind of cool is that if you go to this Raspberry Pi 2 and rename it, you'll see here I'm going to add a bunch of A's and you'll see the name change in real time. So like everything in Mesh Central, everything is real time. I can change the icon to something else, and it will change it right there. Um, another thing I want to show off is RDP support. So I'm going to uh, go to a Windows machine. I'm going to say RDP, 
uh, and the target will be 3389. Uh, three, click OK. You'll see right here RDP. I click Open. Launches the RDP. Specifies 127.001 and the local port right here. Click OK. And boom, I get a full RDP session routed right through the uh, Mesh Central server. So that's really, really nice. And of course, the nice thing with RDP is it's, it's fairly fast um, and you can cut and paste, drag and drop. So there's lots of benefits to using that if, if you have windows on both sides, on the, uh, on the router side and on the remote side. Okay, and of course you're seeing here, I have one connection right now to this MT7 machine. I have the two connections for my uh, putty sessions right here. And as I close this putty, you'll see the, the connections dr drop down. Close and goes to one, close goes to zero, and then I can close this one. There it goes, it goes to, uh, to zero also. So that's it. This is the Mesh Central routing tool allows you to port map any port on your local computer to any remote port uh, anywhere in the world, basically, through your Mesh Central server. It passes through NATs, through proxies, and so allows you to use kind of, um, in, instead of web-based applications, switch over to kind of full-fledged desktop apps. So that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.